Thanks so much for joining us on Sites on the City today. We talked to a city council candidate, Charlie Reese. Uh, delighted to curate your city, Durham. This is my colleague and dear friend, Justin Laidlaw, AKA Buddy Rusky, asking lots of important questions about what matters for the future of your city. Follow us on our YouTube channel. Stay tuned for more interviews with city council candidates and city council members. Uh, check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and our website, Clarion Content Media. We curate your city, Durham. that they were asking Chief Lopez about a residency requirement or at least a certain amount of residency because there's some argument that not enough Durham police actually live in Durham. Uh, are those the kind of changes? I mean, I feel like you're fairly involved with the activist community from the list of names we just heard and I love the psychology of that kind of collaboration. Are you, are you hopeful that the police and that kind of community are going to be able to have those kind of conversations in Durham going forward? I certainly hope so. I think... Um, one of the things we uh, got the city manager to institute last year was making sure that every police officer, every sworn officer goes through racial equity training. Uh, that's really, really important to provide officers at every level with the context, historical context, a cultural context for the decisions they have to make every day, often life and death decisions. But also decisions like, do I ask this driver to, to consent to a search of their vehicle if I don't have any reason to? Um, that was one of the sort of main drivers last summer was the statistical evidence showed that uh, black drivers were twice as likely to be asked by an officer just in a regular routine traffic stop, can I search your vehicle, uh, than white drivers. Um, and, you know, that's not great. Uh, and that's, that's yeah, the kind of, the kind of <laughs> racial disparity <laughs> that diminishes us as a community. And what we've seen since we instituted the written consent uh, requirement is um, uh, what, what I think many of us had hoped we would see is a little bit more discernment on the part of officers who were in that situation um, and a little bit more reliance on actual objective facts as opposed to just I'm going to ask this person to search because I can or because I pulled them over in a certain part of town. Um, the, the evidence is mixed about what the results of the written consent form actually are. Uh, one thing that is clear is that written consent uh, that officers are asking for consent much less often than they did a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time that written that consent searches have gone down, probable cause searches have gone up. Um, and we need to look at why that's happening. Uh, there, It could be happening for good reasons. It could be happening for reasons that are not so good. Um, or it so, could have no correlation at all. Or it could all. have no correlation at all. Exactly right. So we need to understand what's going on there. I think we need a little bit more data. Um, but the what I like about the conversation is that the city council is actually asking these questions now. So Councilman Shewell uh, kind of led the questioning at the last uh, meeting where this topic was discussed. And I like the fact that, uh, that we're going to be asking for answers uh, because I think for a long time we didn't do that. Yeah. That's one of the great outgrowths of last summer. But to get directly to your question, um, I think there is still a considerable amount of frustration in our community about um, some of the things that the police department does and some of the ways that the leadership of the police department speaks to the community on certain issues. But what I think uh, we can't lose sight of is the fact that our police officers do an incredibly dangerous and difficult job. No, you're they right, do you're it right. well. Um, and uh, and if, the, if, the, if what I heard at the police graduation uh, last month is any indication that our young officers are being taught uh, to think about the job the right way. What, but having said all that, there is still um, a lot of cultural inertia inside the police department, and I think so. I think it's going to take some time, uh, but I think we in the community have to try as hard as we can, despite hearing things that make our blood boil come out of certain uh, of the leadership's mouths. We have to remain focused on the central fact that our communities will only be safe if we have a functioning relationship with the police department. And as hard as that is to do, uh, we have to continue to try. Um, there, are lots sure. of, there are lots of other things that we can try to do. I think ultimately the long-term answer is folks don't commit crimes if they have jobs that pay a living wage, if they have access to affordable health care, right. if they have actual human connections with people that either live in their home or in their community with them. Um, and that is sort of the long-term work of any 
society, of any city, right. is to make sure that folks have those connections, have those economic opportunities. We've got some issues in the meantime with the rising crime, particularly violent crime, uh, but I think ultimately if we stay focused on the long-term issues and try to mitigate some of the damage that these sort of decades and generations of disinvestment are causing in our communities and continue to build a relationship of trust with the police department, I think we can get to a place where uh, crime will go down and where uh, these communities will start having a little bit more vibrant economic life to them. So. And that might just be a, a great place to leave it because I think both you and Justin have really nailed on this concept of it's not silos, it's collaboration. Absolutely. And it's fantastic to hear that you're already out there working with these activist groups, that you're engaged in these conversations in the community, and we're thrilled to have you on sites in the city, grateful that you came on and gave the public some answers and some time on some of this stuff, and appreciate you answering the questions. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, guys. And appreciate just, it. Yeah, uh, it's great being here. Well, I just wanted to leave thank on, on yeah, one yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah uh, sure. The we joked with uh, Councilman Eddie Davis about getting on Twitter, and I know that's something that I've definitely yeah, you seen do a great you engaging job. on. Um, and just thinking about, uh, you know, Twitter, social media may seem frivolous, you know, on some levels, but at the same time, that um, communication tool, being able to release that type of information um, through a place like Twitter, where young people are engaging, where mm -hmm. politically active, um, you know, citizens are engaging, um, is important, and so, um, you know, do you feel like that, do, do you see that, do you see something like Twitter as a, you know, just a, a fun thing to have on your smartphone, or is it something that you feel like um, is a potential way to um, you know, further engage the community? Well, I think the answer is yes. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Um, I was involved in Twitter, I got, first got on Twitter when my first daughter was born in the midst of screaming babies up in the middle of the night and you kind of reach out for contact on the I just got my iPhone and so we created this kind of network of local young parents who were trying to figure out how to get my baby to stop crying or how do I folk, how do I deal without having enough sleep uh, but over time what Twitter has become is really kind of the one of the great digital commons mm -hmm. um, of, of the 21st century and uh, I really like the ability to reach out to a bunch of different kinds of people um, and have instant connections um, and to share not only my personal life and how cute my kids are and when they do something really sweet, um, but also to talk about the issues that are facing our city. Um, I have a friend who's on the county commission in Wake County, uh, John Burns, and, and John has done a fantastic job of using social media, both Twitter and Facebook, uh, to be very transparent about the decisions that he has to make as a county commissioner, about budgeting decisions, about why he had to make a difficult choice that maybe some activists in the community didn't like or thought it should have been, he should have spent a little more on this, a little less on that. Uh, that's the kind of thing I think um, uh, members of the city council can and should do more of, and that's how I, I intend. That's how I intend to use social media if I'm fortunate enough to serve the city on the city council. It is a tool that can be leveraged in such incredible ways to put um, to put the workings of the city council in front of folks who aren't going to sit at home and watch the cable channel devoted uh, to right, uh, right. to the city council meetings. But you can use it to get out information. Um, there's a big city council meeting coming up on this date. We're going to talk about this. Really want you to turn out and tell us tell us what you think. Um, this is the current budget dilemma we're facing in the city. Uh, there are a bunch of, and obviously you can't do this in 140 characters, but you'd link out to something else. Um, or 15 the, seconds or 15 Instagram, seconds, Instagram maybe, sure, do a video. Snapchat. You know, these are the these are the priorities that I'm using to evaluate these budgeting decisions, these capital improvements. Uh, these are the kinds of things I want our real estate developers want to build high-end residential downtown. This is how I want them to partner with us, either downtown or in other parts of the city, to continue to keep our focus on affordability for working families. Those are the kind of messages that you can get out on social media in a way that really engage folks. And, and I think it's really important, especially in the city council level, there is no more local office than this. It doesn't get any more close to the voters than this. Um, but I think if you can talk about the decisions, not just uh, campaign events and city council meetings, but also talk about why you're, you're doing the things you're doing, the choices you're making, uh, the values that you're reflecting in your, in your votes, uh, I think that is the way to really turn Twitter into something powerful in the lives of folks. 
Uh, so that's how I intend to use it. That's how I've used it now. Um, and that's what we're going to do going forward. So, Great. Yeah. Well, let's make sure people have your Twitter handle. Sure, it's after. Charlie Reese, one word, and it's with a C. Charlie Reese with a C, not like the peanut butter cups. Um, but, R-E-E-C-E. Uh, that's right, Charlie Reese. And it and is up. fantastic. We do follow him on Twitter already <laughs> at the Clarion Content. And I love that you brought that up, Justin, because I do think, you know, that's why we're doing this show, is we hope to engage with the public. We see the failing of the local newspaper not as an indication that people don't care about media. We believe people still deeply care Absolutely. about media. Yep. Craigslist just killed their model. Yeah. You know, they got totally <laughs> dependent on classified advertising and yeah. went away. And, you know, we're looking at different ways to be media and different ways to raise money, but there's a, a crying need for people to have information about this. People deeply care. And the fact that you want to find alternative ways besides just the public access channel, and that's not to say that people's media oh, is no, great. It's great. Yeah, They're but, great, yeah. but not everybody is gonna sit at home and watch public access TV. I so mean, that, Twitter is how I found out about Clarion. I mean, that's you know that's how right? I first learned about it. So right. um, yeah, it's a, it can be a great medium for breaking through uh, and reaching folks who aren't gonna do some of the traditional things, like people who don't have a subscription to the Herald Sun. Who we'll don't. never subscribe right. to the Herald Sun. Right. I mean, our peers are never, ever going to subscribe to the Herald Sun and the NNI. I feel bad for them. I mean, you know, and I, we like the indie, but it gets thinner and thinner and thinner, and they let their Durham editor go, and we get in this world where it's like news is just as important. How do we get it? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So we're really grateful right. that you gave us some YouTube Thanks, time. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, great. Do this kind of stuff. Thank, Thank you awesome. so much. It's All really right. terrific.